Yes. Well, hello there. Have you decided yet? Are you coming? Mm, I doubt it. Come on. It's fun here. We're playing beer pong. Mm, I think I'm a pass. It's getting too late and I'm having too much fun with my architecture book. Oh, come on! Don't be such a fuddy daddy! By the way... Lisa asked about you. <laughs> now I definitely won't come. Better be alone than in the wrong company. Boring... I have always thought of myself as outgoing and adventurous. But somehow I ended up attracting what you would call introverted people into my life. They exhibited similar tendencies for introverted characters. You know, enjoying their own time to a larger extent, having a certain depth of character, even being perceived as weird in a way and not sociable. Of course I didn't feel of it so much up until some few years. Am I really extrovert? How come these people are drawn to me? Or is it me who is drawn to them? I started to see a pattern and thought maybe I was having qualities that made introverted people to be comfortable with me, to open up and share their characters. Because comfort is what introverted people require. They're very cautious and selective with their social circles and it can be challenging to penetrate that social barrier with reserved people but I discovered that being mellow and patient works wonders with humans. And I wasn't successful all the time. There were some personas that were so boxy in a way, for a lack of a better word, that I would get bored and tired, attempting to tear down the defense and make them to lower the guard. Somewhere down the line, it dawned on me. Wait a minute, I enjoy people's company, but I like to spend time on my own as well. Which became more prominent the older I became. Teenage years came and passed by, and I became nostalgic of that era. I found myself reminiscing good old carefree days. I caught myself on being more and more of a loner. You know how it is. 9 to 5, come home, tired and drained mentally. Don't want to see or hear anyone. Some more time passed, the existential crisis happened. I was pushed towards loneliness and had to accept an introverted lifestyle. Even though I longed for friendly souls, someone who could understand me on a deeper level, slowly I started to realize that introversion became a fact. You there, watching this, you almost could guess that I had introverted personality, right? I mean, how else a person can choose to speak about these topics? WRONG! I'm fascinated by people, societies and human behavior. And now I'm in a phase of wanting to explore diverse minds, meet a lot of new personalities and see different faces all the time. What the hell are you talking about? The purpose of this prologue, if you may, is to tell that extroversion and introversion are cyclical occurrences. Which means that they come and go depending on your headspace for the moment, what phase of life you are in. Of course I have to clarify my statements here. So towards the end of the video I will wrap up everything and give you a good conclusion. First and foremost, let's establish the distinctions between extroversion and introversion. The general perception of extroverted people is that they draw their energy, their life essence from social interactions, whereas introverted people get energized by spending time alone. Simply put, extroverts value the outwardly, whereas introverts value inwardly. In the mainstream media, the pop culture, extroversion is praised and preferred as a personality category. Structuring, planning and raising societies are mainly directed towards extroverted energy. The reason they say is that because we humans have to engage with one another, because our sense for happiness is dependent on others. Being introverted on the other hand is to be some kind of a shy, loner creep who has zero social competence and has to be avoided at all costs. That of course is a huge misconception. The reasoning is totally out of whack and far away from the truth. I will explain later why societies uplift extroversion and refute that argument. Some of the traits that extroversion is described with is being outgoing, sociable, gregarious, easy to connect with, easy to attract other people, optimistic, very talkative and outspoken, having a fast-paced lifestyle. What are the setbacks of such personality, you ask? Good question. Extroverts tend to become easily bored and are prone to excitement of high-risk moves. This is Sparta! like dangerous activities and acting without thinking, just for the sake of filling up the energy levels. 
Introversion is associated with being more thought interested, directing the attention into the self, more self aware and not preferring superficial acquaintances. Consequently, they say that introverted people are more prone to cynicism, being an outcast and tend to be emotionally unstable, especially within a larger group of people. So I understand that rambling up these qualities doesn't say it so much, does it? And that's why I will present you a little bit nuanced perspective on this topic. Before proceeding, I have a crucially important message for you. Don't ever cave, succumb to people's perception, definition, description of you. We humans tend to share our subjective opinions on everything. Be always critical about the information that you acquire and question smallest things, not in a paranoid way, rather being driven by curiosity and aptitude for finding the truth. That being said, the brain's programming is not set in stone. As far as hardware, we're all dealt very similar tools to go through life, especially in this modern world that we live in. I am well aware that genetics grant us different advantages, disadvantages, but we all have brains we can control and develop the mind in the direction we want. After all, the days of hunting are long gone and survival of the fittest is decided by our mind capabilities, meaning the software downloaded on this uh, computer can and should be decided by us. You can regulate it by training and practice. Practice. Today I have a bad self-esteem and my brain is rewarding me when I snack on my guilty pleasure chocolate bars. Tomorrow I can understand, learn and emotionally mature by acknowledging my true self and not draw the sense of self from outside criteria. And thus stop seeing food solely as a source of pleasure. So I rewired my brain. My point is our personalities shift, our opinions change and our belief systems can be rewired. Everything in life is cyclical in one way or another, not just extrovert and introvert characteristics. Non-duality, meaning that two sides of a coin still belong to a coin, powers all aspects of life. And whenever there is a choice between two opposites to be made, always take the golden middle ground. Balance is tremendously important. Extrovert, emotion driven, outwardly, consuming, superficial, groupy, feminine. And that's why the feminine is the driving factor for economical growth and why most of consumerism is marketed towards it. And that's why you see all the gender confusion happening. Feminization of nations is thought out to fit the economical growth. The masculine creates, the feminine consumes. Feminization is an unnatural way of creating consuming force. I don't want to delve into the politics in this video, so let it be for another time. Introvert, thought driven, inwardly, giving, loner, deep, looking inside creates strong characters, unshakable personalities and a fierce competition. Few of those who have the power, the masculine, doesn't want that. The less the masculine energy in the world, the less is the competition. A true masculine is not meant to be tamed, which means less conformity and control. Just look at the criminal statistics and you will get the picture. Awareness and mindfulness is the opposite of an extrovert. Life is found in depth, not width. Searching within is what leads to finding the truth. As with everything, if you're an extrovert person for the moment being, you have to lean more towards introversion to have an opportunity to explore your mind. Likewise, finding direction in life can make you more extroverted later on. The cycle of life. There's a term describing a hybrid between extroversion and introversion. Ambiversion. An ambivert person has the best from the both of the worlds, can adapt to situations and circumstances with ease. This picture is a good illustration of what personality categories represent. Not to label anyone, but when you truly understand your core, you love spending time on your own as much as you enjoy others company. Because everything comes out of love and flows in accordance with life, without any tension, any resistance, unconditionally. Or saying, oh.